Why News with William Theo, Angelo Castro the Third, and their lead Basingan. Good evening. Labor groups expressed their dismay over the result of their meeting with President Rodrigo Duterte last night regarding the signing of the executive order for the end of contractualization in the country. Here's why for Magella Dora. Labor groups were dismayed when President Rodrigo Duterte did not sign the proposed executive order that would end contractualization in the country in their meeting in Malacanang last night. The meeting was attended by representatives of Nagaisa Labor Coalition, Associated Labor Unions, Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Kilusang Mayo Uno, Centro, Federation of Free Workers, and Partido Manggagawa. The militant groups believe the EO, which was drafted in May last year, is now long overdue. Nalungkot at uh, siyempre may galit dahil paulit-ulit naman na yung meetings namin at uh, yun nga, napaasa kami kahapon dahil marami nang uh, naganap na pag-ipag-usap sa Secretary of Labor. Hindi pinirmahan ni uh, Presidente Duterte at ang aming fear nga dyan ay yung, yung time na hinihingi, uh, mawa-water down dyan ha, yung, yung version habang tumatagal. Kala namin yun na, na happy kami. Pwede na kami mag-inom. Uh, then, uh, nag-inom kami sa dismaya. Presidential spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque, however, clarifies that the President asked for more time to decide on the issue of ENDO. Closed doors, and although I was invited, I had um, previous engagement, but I was made to understand that he asked for more time to issue the executive order on ENDO. And that's all that I was informed by um, head of uh, protocol. The president asked to give him until March 15 to think about the EO and to have a meeting with the group again regarding this. But KMU chairman Elmer Labug fears that if the EO will be kept pending, the hope for it to be signed will soon be gone. Hindi ako naniniwalang may suggest. Kasi ang sinasabi niya ay kakausapin pa niya yung mga grupo ng kapitalista. Kapag... Uh, kinausap niya ito, di talagang sasabihin nila na investor sila and therefore kailangan masunod kung ano yung mga demands nila. On the other hand, the Employees Confederation of the Philippines says they do not want to meddle with the issue on ENDO. ECO President Donald D. says it is up to the President to decide. Rajal Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, the Manila Electric Company or Meralco will impose over one peso per kilowatt hour increase in power rates this month. But Meralco clarifies the electricity rate hike will not entirely be imposed this February. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Manila Electric Company or Meralco will impose 1.08 pesos per kilowatt hour increase in power rates this month. With this, households consuming 200 kilowatt a month could expect an increase of 216 pesos in their electricity bills. Those consuming 300 kilowatt a month will have an additional of 323 pesos. 431 pesos will be added to the bills of households consuming 400 kilowatt per hour. Well, those consuming 500 kilowatt a month can expect an increase of 539 pesos. The power distributor explains the power rate hike is due to the increase in the prices of electricity from suppliers. Adding to the rise in power rates is the weakening of peso and the additional taxes imposed on transmission charges because of the tax reform law. Meralco says it knows the power rate hike is too heavy a burden for Filipino families. That's why it decided to impose the electricity rate increase in several tranches. Medyo may tumataas na mga bilihin, uh, nababalitaan naman natin yung mga upward adjustments din ng ibang basic products and services. Minabuti po namin na hindi implement ngayong February itong full impact na 1 peso and 8 centavos per kilowatt hour. The Energy Regulatory Commission or ERC also advised Meralco to take into consideration the welfare of consumers, prompting the power distributor to not entirely impose the power rate hike this February. 
Meralco will release this week the increase in the electricity bill of consumers this month. As much as possible, we, we would not want to, de to delay the bills. Uh, so we are, we are trying to facilitate uh, the simulations of the options that we will take, ideally within the week. Meralco advises consumers to conserve energy to avoid getting higher electricity bills, especially since power rates normally go up during summer months. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. President Rodrigo Duterte will possibly visit Kuwait soon. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. President Rodrigo Duterte met with Kuwaiti Ambassador to the Philippines Musaid Saleh al Twaik yesterday in Malacanang. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque says the meeting was bilateral and only the two leaders know what was discussed. However, Roque says the president might visit Kuwait soon. Although I was told that I should not. But there's a trip in the offing um, to Kuwait. The official says the Kuwaiti government may want to ensure its cooperation with the Philippines in protecting OFWs. Well, I guess um, Kuwait um, wants to assure the president that Philippine nationals are protected no, in Kuwait and to see for himself. There are around 250,000 Filipinos in Kuwait and 165,000 of them are household domestic workers. President Duterte has said that he is considering to order a recall of OFWs and declare a deployment ban of Filipinos in Kuwait if the Kuwaiti government will not do anything to stop the abuses against OFWs. Meanwhile, in a report of Kuwait Times, a body of a woman thought to be a Filipina domestic helper was found inside the freezer in an apartment. However, the Philippine Embassy in Kuwait is still confirming the report. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacania. The Philippine Embassy in Kuwait has issued an advisory to undocumented workers, reminding them to take advantage of the amnesty program set by the Kuwaiti government that will end on February 22. Bert Sarudo will tell us why. Illegal or undocumented workers in Kuwait have until February 22 to take advantage of the amnesty program that the Kuwaiti government is offering. The Philippine Embassy in Kuwait issues the advisory to all undocumented OFWs, warning them of the massive crackdown that the Kuwaiti government will enforce against illegal workers or aliens. The Kuwaiti Interior Ministry has issued the circular on January 29, extending the amnesty program until February 22. Under the program, all overstaying migrant workers will be allowed exit without suffering fines or penalties. Illegal workers, on the other hand, will be given the chance to process their documents so they can stay in the country legally. Pag uh, umalis kayo ng under the amnesty period, ay uh, maaari pa kayong bumalik ng Kuwait. Uh, walang walang ban sa pagbalik sa Kuwait kung gusto pa rin yung bumalik ng Kuwait. Ngunit kung naabutan kayo ng crackdown, ikuhulong kayo at uh, yun, uh, may uh, lifetime ban na sa pagbalik sa Kuwait. Based on Kuwaiti government data, the number of undocumented Filipino workers in the country has already reached a little less than 11,000. Most of them are domestic helpers who often fall prey of illegal recruitment or have expired working visas. However, the Philippine Embassy has only received around 300 applications for the amnesty program. Once these applications are given clearance by the Kuwaiti government, they will be allowed to go home. The Department of Foreign Affairs had also sent auxiliary personnel to assist the OFWs in the processing of their amnesty program applications. Bert Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue, Middle East. Students from various schools will hold a massive protest against the proposed tuition increase in some universities and colleges. Around 400 universities and colleges across the country have reportedly submitted their proposals for a tuition hike to the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED. The National Union of Students of the Philippines, or NUSP, argues the university's request for a 6 to 10 percent increase in tuition is unreasonable. Instead, instead of uh, supposedly uh, being the 
uh, regulator of uh, higher education, yung mas nangyayari pa ay siya yung uh, nag uh, pad na lang. No? It acts as a mere stamp pad to increases in fees. Once approved, the proposed tuition increase will be implemented in the school year 2018 to 2019. Local farmers will sell rice at cheaper prices at the Agribusiness Center inside the head office of the Department of Agriculture or DA in Quezon City Circle on the 14th of this month. According to Agriculture Secretary Manny Pignol, the agency will help cooperatives of farmers sell rice to the public at just 38 pesos per kilogram. The rice that will be sold is equivalent to high-grade rice being sold at public markets at 50 pesos per kilo. According to the Agriculture Secretary, this only proves that the prices of rice should not increase since there is sufficient supply in the country. The hike in the prices of rice is allegedly due to rice cartel or the taking of unfair advantage of several businessmen. Yes, I think that the cartel is working again because uh, alam nilang walang pang stabilize yung NFA ng uh, nabika sa palengke. Kaya talagang ano, walang choice yung mga tao. Meanwhile, some senators appeal to the Department of Transportation to consider procuring new coaches for MRT and returning the Dalian trains to China. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The Metro Rail Transit or MRT3 has yet again experienced another breakdown at 10 this morning. According to MRT officials, the train encountered electrical failure which forced them to unload about 800 passengers at the northbound lane of Santolan Annapolis Station. The defective train was immediately brought to the depot and the passengers were loaded to the next train. As of 11 a.m., there were only seven trains in operation with 11 minutes gap of arrival in each station. Learning this problem, some senators believe that with the continuous problems in MRT operation, it is high time for the Department of Transportation to consider buying new coaches and return the 48 unused Dalian trains to China. Tiriti talaga ka siya. Huwag nang pilitin. Mag-umpisa na tayo mag-order ng mga bago at isoli natin dahil nagawa yan ng Singapore sa Dalian, sinoli sa kanila. So I think siguro umpisahan ni Secretary, mag na na niya kung anong gagawin dyan sa Dalian na yan. Tapos kung hindi na pwede gamitin, mag-order na talaga tayo ng train na bagay talaga dun sa MRT. Senator Grace Poe, who is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Public Services, says the DOTR should also decide now on the issue of MRT maintenance provider. Tanungin na natin, um, totoo bang merong talagang interes ang sumitomo, ang Japan na mag-takeover? So anong ginagawa nila? Um, tuloy-tuloy na ba ang pag-uusap niyan? Kasi hanggang sa ngayon, hindi pa malinaw kung sinong papalit sa maintenance. The 48 Dalian trains are worth 3.8 billion pesos. The Philippine government has initially paid Dalian Locomotive and Rolling Stock Corporation 800 million pesos. These trains, however, remain unused as they are not compatible with the current system of the MRT. Nel Maribohok, UNT Vinyos and Rescue, Pasay City. Rescue workers are racing against time to search for the remaining seven persons in the massive earthquake in Taiwan. Meanwhile, a sad news for the Filipino community in Taiwan as a number of death toll from the massive earthquake reached 10 persons. Amiel Pascual is in Taipei, Taiwan to tell us why live. Yes, Amiel, go ahead. Yes, Darlene, it is indeed a sad news for us here in Taiwan as authorities already recovered the body of Filipina caregiver Melody Albano de Castro as confirmed by the Hualien County Disaster Response Center. As of 7 in the evening tonight, Hualien County Disaster Response Center has released the list of casualties since the rescue retrieval operation started. They are as follows. At a house, Lin Li Chen, Liu Dong Tang, inside Marshall Hotel was a Cho Si Suan, and from Yun Mei Tsui Di apartment were Dai Chi Shang, Yang Li Rong, Li Yang Chi, Yu Fei, Zhang Chen Chang, and Melody De Castro. The Manila Economic and Cultural Office has already sent its labor affairs attaché to the building to where Melody was working. It has also established contact with Melody's relatives in the Philippines.
na napaalam na sa kanilang sa kanyang uh, ex of kin no sa no, sa Pilipinas. At uh, ngayon yung Meco staff ay nasa ano sa ospital at saka nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga authorities ng Walian uh, tungkol nga sa sa bangkay. Meanwhile, Taiwan's National Immigration Agency has, uh, con has convened an emergency task force to assist foreign nationals whose travel documents have been damaged or lost in Tuesday's earthquake. The agency vows to reissue the national relevant documents free of charge. The agency adds that it is now in contact with foreign representative offices and travel agencies to provide assistance to foreign nationals who have been caught in the earthquake. Also, the immigration agency vows to assist family, family members of victims to travel to Taiwan. Darlene, as of now, we are still uh, asking for updates as to what will be the next move of our labor representatives here in Taiwan regarding the body of Melody. But uh, Mr. Lito Banayo told us that they have informed Malacanang regarding this. That's our update. update. Back to you. Thank you, Amiel Pascual, reporting live from Taiwan. Next on Y News. The International Criminal Court, or ICC, will conduct a preliminary examination on the anti-drug war of the Duterte administration. FIVOX reports that danger level remains high near Mount Mayon despite the ease in volcanic activities. Y News will be right back. The International Criminal Court, or ICC, will conduct a preliminary examination on the anti-drug war of the Duterte administration. Rosalie Kos will tell us why. The International Criminal Court, or ICC, will start its collection and verification of information on the communication filed by the camp of self-confessed hitman Edgar Matobato through his legal counsel, attorney Jude Sabio. To be examined in particular is the crime against humanity because of the anti-drug war of the Duterte administration, which resulted in the high drug-related killings. This is confirmed by Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque, but he reiterated that this will just be a preliminary examination to determine if there is a basis for the ICC to conduct a formal investigation on the allegations against President Rodrigo Duterte. We note that this is only a preliminary investigation. The Office of the Prosecutor is merely exercising its mandate to determine whether there is reasonable basis to proceed with an investigation. The Philippine Embassy in The Hague, Netherlands, where the ICC is based, will communicate to the court that the anti-drug war of the government is a sovereign act of the Philippines and the courts in the country have the capacity to investigate on complaints against the anti-drug war. If required, Philippine authorities are ready to submit to ICC the information necessary about the anti-drug war. Roque believes that the opposition is behind this to embarrass the chief executive. In fact, sila pong behind this. Obviously, you know, there's been concerted public relations initiative against the president, probably to coincide with February. Though Malacanang is confident that the process in ICC will not advance to preliminary investigation, Roque says President Duterte is ready to defend himself. We view, of course, this uh, decision of the uh, prosecutor as a waste of the court's time and resources. Again, as a matter of sovereign consent, the president has said that if need be, he will argue his case personally before the International Criminal Court. Meanwhile, Attorney Sabio and Senator Antonio Trillanes IV both welcome the report and look forward to the investigation on the war on drugs to obtain justice and to have President Duterte arrested eventually. However, Malacanang insists that the ICC has no capacity to order the arrest of a chief executive. 
Such was what happened to the case of Sudan President Imar Hassan Ahmad al-Bashir because it requires state cooperation. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. President Rodrigo Duterte answers the threat of Communist Party of the Philippines founding chair Jose Maria Sison to have five new People's Army killed for every soldier who will perish in encounters. Rosa Licoz is back to tell us why. President Rodrigo Duterte is unshaken on the threat of Communist Party of the Philippines founding chair Jose Maria Sison that New People's Army rebels can kill one soldier every day. In his meeting over snacks with 215 former NPA rebels in Malacanang last night, he said for every soldier killed, he would have five NPA rebels killed. Ay, Sison, barat mana. Limang may ngon siya muku patay kag sundalo ba siya usa kada adlaw? Nga no ako di ko kumao. Inyong karapatan, magbubukid bang gagawa dyan kung unsa na lang inyong mga liga. Huwag ipaihaw ko na. Usa ka sunda, usa ka adlaw. Ino na ko militari, pagpatay mo glima. Huwag na yung mapatay nga usa. Sige daw. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque says Sison should not belittle what the government can do against the communist rebels. I think the message is, you don't threaten us, Joma Sison. We are the state. If we haven't eradicated you, it's because we opted not to eradicate you as Filipinos. But if you want war, we're ready to go to war. Meanwhile, President Duterte wants the 48 female former rebels to tour to Hong Kong and China to be exposed on capitalism. He will bring them with him on his next visit in China where he will discuss with the Chinese government the Philippines' concerns about the Philippine rice. Why not? Kamong 48, pakit on tamog, on sa kabarat ng komunista. 683 former NPA rebels from various parts of Eastern Mindanao have returned to the fold of the law and the first batch of them has toured Rizal Park, Intramuros, and Malacanang. President Duterte promised them security, shelter, jobs, and education for their children. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of FIVOX still raises alert level 4 over Mayon volcano despite showing fewer signs of abnormalities in the recent days. Here's why from Monoxon. One should not be deceived by the seemingly calm state of Mayon volcano. This has been the warning of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX. According to Undersecretary Renato Solidum, despite showing fewer signs of abnormality, the volcano remains dangerous. Solidum explains the public should not make as basis what their eyes see, but the data coming from the equipment of the agency. Basis sa uh, uh, instrumento maliban doon sa nakikita ay mas vigorous ang eruptive activity ng volcano sa ngayon. The FIVOC says it is considering two scenarios. First is the continuous spewing of lava like what happened in the previous weeks. Second is the blockage of solidified lava on the crater of the volcano that may create extreme pressure. The agency notes that the second scenario is the possibility of a strong eruption. In the recent days, Mount Mayon continued to spew lava fountain. In fact, FIVOX recorded 153 episodes of lava fountaining this week alone. Since January 13th, the volcano released 70 million cubic meters of lava. This is higher compared to its previous eruptions in 1960 to the 2014. So itong nangyayari ngayon sa mayon ay mas maigi na kaysa mabilis ang ilabas lahat, mas uh, ma ma mapaminsala ito at in the long term, kapag hindi lava ang inilabas, kundi basag-basag or fragmented volcanic materials, ang potential impact ng lahar ay mas lumalaki. Next week will mark the first month since Mount Mayon spewed out lava fountains. Alert level 4 remains over the extended 8-kilometer danger zone around the volcano. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Legazpi City, Albay. The Department of Labor and Employment has provided 60 million pesos worth of livelihood assistance for the victims of Mayon's activities. Meanwhile, the families of overseas Filipino workers in Albay receive cash and welfare relief assistance from OWA. 
Here's why from my Bermudez. An additional 30 million peso fund was given by the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, as a form of livelihood assistance for those affected by the activities of Mayon. This is aside from the initial 30 million peso fund for the Tulong Pangkabuhayan para sa mga displaced workers or to PED program. Yun yung sinasabi ko additional 30. 30 million, hindi na emergency employment yun. Livelihood na yun. O, kaya encourage ko yung mga taga rito na magtanim ng root crops gaya ng patatas, kamote, gabi, kasi merong malaking market for that. Dole also pushes to increase the 290 peso minimum wage in Bicol to respond to workers' need in the region. Masyado nang mababa, dapat uh, 300 na. Trucks containing fresh vegetables were brought by Dole to be given to the victims of the activities of Mayon. Meantime, 50 million pesos worth of welfare assistance program was given by the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration or OWA as benefit to OFWs and their families in Albay. 500 families were initially given cash relief worth 3,000 pesos each. Cash relief tayo, cash tayo kasi binibigay na natin sa mga pamilya ng OFWs ang kalayaan na gastusin yung pera kasi ibang government agencies yun na yung relief goods. Even active or inactive OWA members may avail the cash benefit. All family members or OFW returnee may also avail the program. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Legaspi, Albay. The local government of Albay creates communal gardens for the benefit of evacuees. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Many evacuees in Albay are becoming more impatient. Most of them are used to have activities on their farms. This is why they are feeling bored staying at evacuation centers doing nothing. One of them is Islao Alaurel, who oftentimes returns to his home in Barangay Salungan in Kamalig, Albay, which is covered by the 6.5-kilometer extended danger zone. <laughs> With this, the local government of Albay decides to set up communal gardens. A lawmaker lends his two-hectare land to evacuees in Ligao City National Technical Vocational High School. The said land is just beside the evacuation center and can be planted with vegetables. Teresita Belga is one of the evacuees who feel glad with the project. Ayo po, tapag na ano ba alimbawa po mapa, lago me. This is why she already began planting pechay which she can harvest and sell within one and a half month. Although the evacuees receive sufficient supply of relief goods, they say it's still better to do something which could give them income. It's a big deal. Because if you harvest the harvest, the other ones are still financial. Pwede na sila makakuha dyan. Ibibinta din na sa market. In the 3rd District of Albay, there are four communal gardens, which are also the project of the local government. There are still more than 58,000 individuals staying at 63 evacuation centers in Albay. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, files tax evasion complaints against four companies before the Department of Justice, or DOJ. The BIR says it is going after Amber Bay Solutions Leasing, Ambrose Industries, La Chilo Cuisine, and the Power Generation of the Philippines for more than 181 million pesos and paid taxes. The Bureau has filed tax evasion complaints against 125 companies under its Run After Tax Evaders or Rate Program under the Duterte Administration. The Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP Northern Luzon Command launches its program called Sundaluna Magsasakapa at Camp Servilano Aquino in Tarlac City. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. The Northern Luzon Command of the Armed Forces of the Philippines has launched a project for its retiring soldiers called Sundaluna Magsasakapa. AFP's partner in the implementation of the said program are the Agricultural Training Institute or ATI, Department of Agriculture, local government units and several other stakeholders. It is an extension project of the Northern Luzon Command for retiring soldiers and their families. The program aims to prepare soldiers near their retirement age to return to their civilian lives. Ito po ay uh, yung para ma-execute po ang uh, 
transition assistance program ng AFP o Armed Forces of the Philippines para matulungan natin yung mga retirees sa darating na panahon na sila ilalabas ng serbisyo. Under the said program, the retiring soldiers will be taught about organic farming, goat raising, and knowledge on climate change, mitigation, and adaptation. Uh, Napaka-importante because this is education. Oh, hindi nga alam ng mga sundalo at even their generals how to uh, do uh, far farming the right way. Kasi may concept tayo ng pagtatanim pero outdated na yon. Dapat tuturuan tayo ng bagong technology, bagong mechanization, bagong uh, strategies. Several retiring soldiers are glad with the said program. They believe should the training become a success, they could focus on their new learnings upon leaving the camp. Pwede po siguro na mag-farming na lang ako after ng retirement. Kung maganda po yung training na mangyayari sa amin, maging maganda yung output niya, at uh, makikita namin na mas maganda sa farming, malamang siya, doon na lang po kami, mag-farming na lang siguro. Lahat kami uh, excited na at uh, proud na naging Uh, kasama doon sa estudyante. Pagdating ng araw, pag-retard ko, uuwi kami sa probinsya at yung natutunan ko dito, i-apply ko doon balang araw. 50 soldiers will initially undergo the program where they will be monitored for two years. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Several Lumad groups have staged a protest in front of the Supreme Court building. The group is opposed to the court's decision favoring the extension of martial law in Mindanao until December this year. They say the government is continually sending soldiers in their communities and their leaders have become victims of extrajudicial killings. Meanwhile, almost half a million pesos was stolen from a school principal in a love scam involving a Nigerian national who disguises as a woman. Robbie de Guzman will tell us why. A Nigerian national was arrested in an entrapment operation in Pasay City after he stole almost half a million pesos from alias Roger, a high school principal in Mindanao. The victim met the suspect via Facebook, who introduced himself as a member of the U.S. Army based in Afghanistan. According to alias Roger, they exchanged sweet messages and had a long-distance relationship. However, Roger was shocked when the Nigeria national told him he will send $1.2 million dollars or will give him 100 million pesos for his home in the Philippines and another $1 million dollar for an orphanage project and a hotel and restaurant. However, before receiving the money sent via a parcel, the principal will have to pay for some documents and clearance permit first. Police Senior Inspector Leopoldo Cajipe Jr. says it was a scheme called Love Scam and Black Dollar Scam. Bigla na lang lumitaw si Harry na na-hold nga raw yung, ano, na yung package ni Professor sa custom. Ngayon kailangan ng mga clearance para mailabas to. Yun ang doon lumitaw si Harry kay Professor sa ngayon. Uh, yung babae rin kachat niya, sinabi rin na i-ano mo na lang, i-comply mo na lang lahat ng requirements. So doon na nag-start magbigay siya. No? Mag magbayad ako ng 48,000 para sa custom clearance. Ay, sinalang nila sa X-ray machine daw, nakita nga pera. Nagkaroon naman ako ng bayaran sa AMLAC. 127,500. Sunod, may penalty rin na 127,500 kasi hindi daw ini-declare yun nila. Pinabayad din ako ng anti-crime certificate, 35,000. Dispatchment fee, 10,000. Elias Roger paid almost half a million to the account name of Jovita Arig. After paying for the said documents, he was told to go to Metro Manila to retrieve the money. He then checked in at a hotel and there they showed him a sample dollar. He began to doubt when instead of getting the money, he was asked to pay 600,000 pesos by a certain Frank Harry. Frank Harry told him the money will be used to purchase a chemical for the stamp that will be used for black money so it could turn into a dollar. Alias Roger afterwards sought the help of the CIDG. And in an entrapment operation last night, Kelechi Christian Okpabi was arrested. 
Kaya nga kasuhan natin siya ng istapa sa ano, uh, concealing his true name and obstruction of justice. Elias Roger has this to say to men. Mga kalalakihan, kung meron man mag-alok sa inyo nga kahit ano, basta babae, huwag kayong maniwala agad. Kasi yan ay manuloko lang, tulad ng nangyari sa akin ngayon. Meanwhile, CIDG Director Ruel Obusan calls on the public to take extra caution. Ingat po tayo kung ang, ang inaalok sa atin ay para sa ikakabu... Uh, Pagkukuha ng mas malaking pera sa maliit na puhunan, ay eh magduda na po kayo. Kasi wala pong negosyong ganyan at wala din pong relasyon na ganyan. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Coming up on Y News. Paris fears for the homeless as snow coats the capital. And Singapore Air Show 2018 offers innovations on drones and cybersecurity technology for the growing global aviation industry. Why News will be right back. X Factor Australia Season 6 champion Marlisa Punzalan is back in the Philippines to continue her career in the country. Punzalan also admits being a fan of Wish FM. Robbie de Guzman tells us why. Marlisa! X Factor Australia Season 6 champion Marlisa Punzalan is among those who have proven Filipinos' world class talent. Since the auditions, Marlisa wowed the popular talent show's judges, including international artist Ronan Kidding. She was the competition's youngest winner at the age of 15. Something's wrong now I love you. After over three years since her win, the 18-year-old Filipino-Australian is back in the Philippines for her Filipino fans. Back in Australia, I've been working how to songwrite my own songs, and um, yeah, I've, I've released the song. I'm going to be working on some cool projects here in the Philippines, um, around uh, different shows here, and um, I'm also um, going to explore some stuff with Ronan Keating. He, he may come here um, to look at what's on the table. Um, and yeah, we're very excited. Marlissa's big win became an inspiration to many. And now, she has an advice to those who dream to be a singer like her. I just want to say to everyone who is trying to be um, achieving of their dreams, um, never ever give up. Always believe in God because He will always be there for you. And if you really love what you do, um, you'll keep going at it. Never give up. Marlisa is one of the guest performers in Wish 1075's 2 million times 2 Thanksgiving celebration for its 2 million YouTube subscribers. The young singer also admits being a fan of Wish. Big congratulations to Wish 1075 for um, the achievement of 2 million um, subscribers. It's amazing. Um, even me, myself, I always watch um, Wish. So thank you so much for having me on it. It's such a pleasure to be on, on the program. It was just like a movie it was just like a song Where Robbie de Guzman UNTV News and Rescue Philippines The ongoing Singapore Air Show 2018 provides a great platform for trade and exchange between aviation companies with a focus on drone technology Here's why from Annie Mancilia as the global aviation industry undergoes a major transformation, the Singapore Air Show, the largest of its kind in Asia in terms of exhibitors, opens on Tuesday with plans to showcase innovative technologies on drones and cybersecurity. The Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore and Airbus are promoting the Skyways drone delivery project, and CAAS has also joined with the Ministry of Transport to announce that the One North Business Park has been designated as a drone estate. A variety of innovations in drone technology are now in display in the exhibit. One interesting type is that which use a tethered drone system for endurance deployment. A typical drone in the market lasts about 15 to 20 minutes, 
but a tether drone can last from four hours, even up to 28 hours. So usually our customer came from the police coast guard, the army, and also for emergency deployment. Or if this can be used in some rescue deployment, especially when there is uh, no communication relay, it can use as a relay, temporary relay station to relay communication. The drone is also equipped with its own light source or night vision capability for night use. So this is a, an area that in the past they have difficulty of flying drone at night inside a tunnel because they can't see it will crash. So with this, it will help to um, overcome the difficulties. In terms of airspace security, the air show features the anti-drone system. This is our super lightweight jammer system. You detect the drone, point to the drone, either you bring it down, if the drone is dangerous, carry a bomb or something, you want to send it home. So, detection system and jammer system. To help aviation businesses look for novel innovations, the air show for the first time will include technology startups, with a total of 70 presenting their technology to potential partners. We're trying to look for opportunities to, uh, to do business with all these companies from all over the world. Flying teams and aircraft from various regions will put on spectacular aerial performances comprising complex maneuver and routines during the week-long exhibit. This year's Singapore Air Show will run until February 11. Annie Mancilia, UNTV News and Rescue, Singapore. And those are the reasons behind the news of February 8, 2018. I am William Theo. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News.